glad you're here. We're in our series. The series is called Faith. And we're talking about faith and what faith really is. Faith is more than believing in God. Bible tells us that the demons believe and tremble. So we know that when we're, when we're encouraged to have faith, that it's more than simply believing in God. It's allowing God to believe through us. We've seen that. It's taking, taking the situations that we face and taking a risk in, in, the, in the life. It's, it's allowing the, uh, oppor- the oppositions to become opportunities. We've talked about that. And this time, what I want to talk to you about, and we've got one more lesson after this one, and then we're going to move on to another series. But what I want to talk to you today about is, is faith instead of fear. Every day of our lives, we get to choose whether we want to walk in faith or we're going to walk in fear. Every day of our lives, we get to decide if God is really in control which means that he's really going to run my life and take care of me, that he's got good things ahead for me, or we get to decide whether it's just going to get worse and worse and worse and the world's going to one day explode, or, or you know, there's bad things out there, and every day of my life I've got to struggle, 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 and, you know, it's, I've got to fight just, just to survive. We get to decide that. We get, we get to decide, you know, whether or not God's really in control or, or he's not. You know, people fear life. They fear that their occupation is going to run out and they're not going to have a job or they, or they fear for their marriage or they, they fear for their health or they fear that their children are going to get hooked up with the wrong kind of a people. And, and what we're really doing is when we allow that fear to control us is we're really choosing fear instead of faith. And we allow fear to control our lives. Now, I'm going to say something, and if I can get this point across to you, I think it's going to revolutionize your thought life on, on faith. You see, fear and faith have something in common. Both of them, fear and faith, ask you to believe something that hasn't happened yet. Fear and faith ask you to believe something you can't see yet. Now, Hebrews chapter 11, go ahead and put that up for me. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, gives us a definition of faith. And it says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of what? Things not seen. But so is fear. We let fear come in. And we began to meditate on fear. And so, and so we began to attract fear, the things that we're fearing to us, and, and they become a part of our, of, our, of our lives rather than what we don't want. That's exactly what we end, end up with. You know, things like uh, fear says, that pain in your side, uh, that's going to take you out. That's what your parent died from, and obviously it's going to take you. Fear says, fear says that you're never going to get well. That sickness that you've got, it's going to take you down. Or, or that your occupation, that your job, your, your business, it's going to go under, and you're going to fail. Faith says, that's not true. Faith says, my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in Christ Jesus. Faith says, by his stripes I am healed. Fear says, <laughs> fear says, Terry already ahead of me on that one. <laughs> fear says... Fear says, you're never going to be happy again. You've gone through too much. Faith says, your best days are still ahead of you. I've got a lot of good stuff for you ahead of you. See, this is the difference. Both of them are asking you to believe something that hasn't happened yet. So which way will you go? So what I want you to see is is that faith, or fear, let me start over. What I want you to see is fear is, is faith in reverse. Fear is the enemy believing through you, causing things to happen. Faith is God believing through you, causing things to happen. Fear is faith in reverse. And so if we can get this and get this understanding, see, and here's the key. The key is we know where we are by what we meditate about. Because whatever that we're meditating about is what's taking root in our lives. And if you're meditating about fearful things, then those fearful things will come to you. Let me show you this in the scripture. We all know about Job and the horrible things that he went through in life. But in Job, we get a little insight here with this thought. Job chapter 3 and verse 25 says this, For the thing that I greatly feared is come upon me. Now, don't distach, detach, don't take apart the thoughts of, of, of him, of his fear bringing it. The thing I feared came to me. And then he goes on and he says, and that which I was afraid of is come unto me. I've had people tell me, you know, life is so good. It's going great for me. 
Everything's wonderful, but I know it's not going to stay this way. You know, the bottom's going to fall out any day. It's going to blow up in my face. I know it's not going to be this way. Now, what I want us to get today is that what we've got to learn to do when these thoughts start coming upon us, we've got to learn to change the channel. And we've got to go from, from having fear thoughts to faith, thought, faith thoughts. And what we've got to learn how to do is instead of allowing our thoughts to go in, into that direction, say, no, Lord, you told me that your favor is for a lifetime. Lord, you told me that goodness and mercy would follow me all the days of my life. Goodness and mercy. Now, now you know, you've got to think about that a second. But goodness, we all understand, good things are with me. They're going to overtake me. They're, they're chasing me. They're following me. But also mercy. See, you don't need mercy until you mess up. <laughs> That's when you need God's mercy. So even when you mess up, God still gives you a promise. His goodness and his mercy will take care of you. God loves us and he wants to take care of us. Once I faced something and it, was, it had the potential to be really, really bad. It had the potential to, to, to destroy. It had the potential to hurt a lot of people and break a lot of hearts. And every morning when I would wake up, this was the thought that hit me first. And it would tell me, you know, you might as well plan for the worst. You might as well plan. You're going down, buddy. This is it. And every day I battled with this. And this is what fear does to each and every one of us. Fear comes to us. And what fear will do is rob you of sleep. Fear will come in the middle of the night and wake you up. And, and, and in your head, it gives you all of these thoughts. You're going down. You might as well plan for the worst. Every day you battle with, with, with a thought. Every day you're, you're struggling with, with, with this thing attacking you. It, it robs you of your, of your energy. It robs you of your joy. It steals from you life. It, it steals from you excitement. And nothing but fear. And so I was in the middle of this, and it had gone on for a little while. And I was in the middle of this battle. And I felt that the Lord spoke to me, not out here, where I heard it, heard it in my ears, but in here, inside, you know, in a, an impression. And he said, Delbert, he says, if you'll give as much time and energy to thinking about that I'll take things that aren't good and make them good, if you'll give as much time and energy to thinking on faith level rather than thinking on the fear level, I'll take care of this for you. And so I had the choice. I had to make the choice whether I was going to plan for the worst, you know, oh my gosh, I'm going down, or was I going to let God be according to his word and believe that he's going to take care of it for me. So I had to change channels. I changed channels. And every time that thought would come, every time it was going to, it was going to be bad, it's going to be the worst, every time that would, that I would change channels and I would say, oh, no, 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 no. My God says that all things work together for good for those that love God and those that are called according to his purpose. And so I, I, was, I was changing channels, and I went through this thing with this mentality instead, and it changed how I approached life. I was able to sleep at night. I was able to get my energy back. I was able to get refocused again. And sure enough, the thing ended soon. It was over. God did amazingly. Nobody was hurt. Everybody worked out really well. Everything came out much better than I had even hoped it would. And so today there are so much for you to fear. You know, you, you fear for, for the economy. You know, you hear such bad things about the economy. You fear for your children and your families. You know, the, the divorce rates and, and the family things that are going on. You fear for your occupations. You know, there's so much. You fear for your health. There's so much to fear. But what God is saying to each and every one of us today is the same thing he said to me then. If you will use your energy and, and, and use your energy and your time to change channels and focus on faith that you're using to focus on fear, God's going to take care of it for you. God's going to make every single situation that you go through come out good. And it's going to be a wonderful, wonderful thing for you. And it takes the exact same amount of energy, does it not, to, 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 to change channels and focus on faith as it does to focus on fear. It, it, it takes the same amount of energy for, for, me, to, for me to say, you know, all things work together for, for good for those who really love God and those who will stay and maintain a place in his purpose as it does to say, oh my God, I better plan for the worst. I'm going down. It takes the same amount of time, same amount of energy. It takes the same amount of time to say, you know, my God really loves me and he cares about me. He's going to make sure that I get through this well as it does to say, everybody hates me. It's going to be bad. 
I better go eat worms. You know, you know, I mean, it, it takes the same amount of energy to do one as it does the other. So why not go from faith, from fear to faith? Why not have faith in, in, instead of fear? Um, <laughs> all right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there's so much to, 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 to fear today. And that's the way the enemy comes at you. People will say to me, you know, I'm afraid that I'm going to be laid off. I'm afraid I'm going to lose my occupation, my job. I'm going down. Well, I understand your concern. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying deny the truth. But I'm saying approach, approach what your concern is through faith rather than fear. And instead of saying, I'm afraid I'm going to get laid off, say, you know, something like along these lines, Father, you say that the steps of a righteous person are ordered of the Lord. And I know you've got a plan for my life. And I know you're going to take care of me. So, so approach it from that way. Well, Delbert, what if I do get laid off? Okay, you do get laid off. You still got to maintain faith. You still got to walk in faith, believing that God really loves you and he's going to take care of you. If, if, you, do, if you do get laid off, what you got to say is, I know you got something better for me. I, I know that there's a better job. I know it'll be a job I like better. It's, it's a job that has better benefits and probably better pay. And so what we do is is we change the way we approach it. Rather than approaching it through fear, we approach it through faith. And we let God believe through us and not let the enemy believe through us. So I'm asking you today, what do you use when you enter into a difficult time? Do you enter, do you use faith or do you use fear? Just think back. Think back of the last time, the last thing that you went through. What took your energy? Did you give your energy to faith or did you give your energy to fear? You see, because what we've got to learn how to do is to stay with Jesus, because sometimes it might take a little while. There was these two blind guys that were following Jesus along, and Jesus had just went, been to Jairus' house, and he had raised Jairus' daughter from the dead, and he and his guys were walking down the street, and these two blind guys saw him, and they started hollering, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And they kept hollering, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And the way the Bible talks is that Jesus didn't even give them a lot of attention. He just kept walking. And they kept following. And they kept saying, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And so Jesus goes into a house, and these guys just follow him right into the house. And here's what the Bible says in Matthew chapter 9, verse 28. It says, they went right into the house where he was staying. And Jesus asked them, now watch this. Do you believe I can make you see? He didn't ask them. Did, he, did they believe if he could do it? If I were to ask you right now, can Jesus do whatever that you need done? You would say, yeah. He can do it. God can do anything. But do you believe he can do it for you? Amen. Do you believe I can make you see? Yes, Lord, they told him. We do. Then he touched their eyes and said, because of your faith, it will happen. Because of your faith. The King James Bible says it this way, according to your faith, be it unto you. So faith will bring us, God believing through us, faith will bring us what we need in life. And sometimes it's just like that. You know, you're, you're crying out to Jesus. You're crying out to God. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. And we get, we sort of give up. We stop following him. No, follow him right on into the house. Stay after him. And here's what I'm really after here. Here's what I'm really after here. Yeah, we know God can do it. But will he do it for me? Here's what I'm getting at. And here's what I want you to to see. Does he love you that much? I know we say he does. We sing the song, Jesus loves me, this I know. We, We say God loves us. But do we believe God loves me? Does God love you the way he loved those two blind guys? Does he love you that much? Yes, he does. does. And once you really decide God loves you, that God really, really, really loves you, that Jesus really, really loves you, and Jesus really, really, really died for you, once you really decide that in your heart, it will change your life. It's more than words. It's more than a confession of faith. This is what you really believe. And once you really believe that God loves you, faith comes alive inside of you. It's no longer a theory. You know God loves you enough to take you through anything. And if God be for you, come on, who who can be against you, right? And this is what I want us to see today. 
God loves you that much. <laughs> so where is your belief taking you? Is it taking you to good things and higher or taking you to bad things and lower? Faith brings good. Fear brings bad. I want to say something. I used this verse last week in Mother's Day. And I was talking about Timothy and all the oppositions that Timothy was facing. Uh, you know, and, he turned, and, and we were talking about taking oppositions and turning them into op- opportunities. And, and so faith was this young, Timothy was this young pastor. And he was facing all of these difficulties and all of, these, all of this, this stuff that was co- going on. And he had apostasy in a church and, and his church was being split by false teachings. And he had some bad leadership in there and he was having to deal with his bad leadership. And, and all of this stress in his life was causing him physical problems and he was having stomach problems and those kinds of things. And, and, and the Apostle Paul was talking to Timothy. Now, right under where I read you last week about your mother and your grandmother, Eunice and Lois, uh, right under that, Paul says this. Same chapter, just a, a verse or two lower. In 2 Timothy chapter 1, and verse 7. For God hath not given us, what? The spirit of fear, but of power and of love, and, and of a sound mind. Now, what I want to really emphasize today on this particular verse is the spirit of fear. See, see that's not from God. Fear is not from God. Faith is from God. And so what Timothy was experiencing was fear. A spirit of fear was on this young man, this young preacher. And Paul is saying to him, son, you've got a spirit of fear on you. And that's not of God. What God's given you is power, love, and a sound mind. Now, here's what I'm getting at. Because if you're going to choose faith instead of fear, you've got to watch out for a spirit of fear. And what you've got to do is be cautious of the friends that you have. You've got to be very selective about the people you get around. Because you can catch a spirit of fear just as you can catch a flu. We understand that in the, in the physical dimension. We understand that if I get around somebody that's sick, if they've got, if they've got something that's contagious, it gets, gets on me, gets in me. It's the same way with, with the spiritual dimension. You get around people, and if you have a lot of friends that are negative, and, and, and they're talking about how doom and gloom, and they're talking about how bad it is, and, and how bad stuff's going in their life, if you get around them, that spirit will get on you. And so I've got you some really good advice. Find you some new friends. And I know you love your friends. I know you do. But if your friend that you love has a swine flu, what do you do? You better get your bacteria mask, and you better back off for a while, right? Until they get healed. <laughs> and, and this is the way it is in, in, the, in, the, in the supernatural dimension as, as well. You've you got to back off from them just a little bit. And, and, then, and then God will take care of things. You've got to be cautious about what you allow to get inside of you. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23 says this, Above all else, guard your heart, for it affects how much? It affects everything you do. And the way things get into our heart is through our eyes and through our ears. Be careful, little eyes, what you see. Be careful, little ears, what you hear. You know, and and, and so it gets in there. And if you're not careful, it will infect you. And so when these things come into you, you've got to realize it. And if you're around doom and gloom people, and you get up, say, in the mornings, and you're getting ready to go to work, you turn on the radio or the television and you're heading for work and, and you hear this bad news. For some reason, the news is always bad. And you hear the bad news and you go to work and, and you're working beside this person who's very negative, always talking about how bad the company is or, or how bad the boss is or, or how bad things are, how bad their marriage is, their children are, their finances are. And this is starting to get into you. And then you leave there and you go to lunch and you go to lunch with people and they're doing the same thing. They're talking about how bad the economy is and, and how bad their finances are, how bad their spouse is or, or how bad their, their, their life is or their children are. And so now, now you're being infected. And then you go back to work and get more of work. And then you go home and you turn on the television and, oh my gosh, there it is again. And and all of this is is coming into you. And if you're not cautious, what you'll begin doing is choosing fear instead of faith. And you're going to start calling and drawing this stuff to you, just like we talked about what Job did. And it's going to be bad. And we can say, you know, it's going to be bad. i got a plan for the worst. Or we can say, instead, choosing faith and say, my God is still on the throne. My God is still under control, and he's going to take care of me. 
What I'm trying to say to you is don't allow anyone to talk you out of your dreams simply because they talk themselves out of their dreams. See, just as sure as fear is contagious, hope is contagious. Joy is contagious. If you're sad, what you need to do is get around some happy people. Am I right? You'll get happy. If, if, you're, if you're not living a victorious life, then get around people that are. Don't get around failing people because vic victory is contagious. Faith is contagious. It will get on you. It, it always amazes me. You know, we had a big crowd last week, and we have a, a big crowd like on Easter Sunday or whatever, and, and people will go out the door. Man, they're pumped. They're excited. And they, they get, line up to tell me how well I preached. <laughs> now, now, don't stop because I'm talking about it, okay, because I really like it. But, but, but they'll line up and they'll, man, that was one of the best ones yet. And, and they'll tell me about the praise and worship. Man, the praise and worship was awesome. It was awesome. It was just full of power. Well, let me let you in on a secret. You see, the praise team doesn't prepare any differently for Easter or Mother's Day than it did for today. Did you? No, no not a bit. I don't prepare any differently for, for Easter or for Mother's Day than I do for today. Well, what's the difference? <laughs> you see, where there's a lot of people, there's a, a lot of energy, a lot of faith gets built up, and whether you know that person behind you or beside you or in front of you or not, doesn't matter because you're going to catch what they got. And, and, as, and as, it, as it becomes contagious in here with faith, you get built up. Wow, man, this is great. This is powerful. And this is what we try to do every single week here at LifeGate Church. I try to give you... A, a double dose. You see, what you might say to me, well, Delbert, what if I'm married to that person that's... <laughs> well, what if I have to go to work and I work elbow to elbow with this person? Well, you need a double dose <laughs> of positive faith. And you need to get it frequently. And I know when you have a bad week and things are not going well for you, I know you don't want to come to church. You just want to lay out, you know. I understand that. I've been there. I know. Listen, when my, when my mama died, that hurt me bad. But I was right here preaching the next Sunday. When my daddy died, I was right here preaching the next Sunday. It wasn't because I had to. It wasn't because this is just my job. It's because this is where I get my injection of faith. It's where I get my injection of energy. I catch it from you. When just seeing you every week energizes me and builds me up so I can face Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. I, it, it helps me. And it will help all of us. And so this is what we try to do here at LifeGate. LifeGate is not a doom and gloom church. When you come here, I hope I'll give you a double injection of faith, a double injection of energy. And so that when you go out of here, you, though you had a bad week, you're ready to face it next Monday. Whether it's bad or not, you're still going to be able to go to it and you're going to face it and you're going to be victorious over it because I'm going to tell you you're going to be. I love to have faith. Instead of fear. Now let me tell you about fear. Maybe I can describe it for you in a way that we can all visualize and see it. See, fear is like fog. We've all been through a fog bank. You know, you're, uh, you, you, get in a, you get into fog and you can feel it. It's, it's damp and sticky. And it's not comfortable. And uh, fear is that way. Fear gets on you and it's, it's, it, it doesn't feel good. And, and it looks spooky. You know, fog looks spooky. You know all the horror movies, they always have fog. Because you know? it's spooky. It, it, it looks frightening. And, w and when, when you hit a, if you're driving and you hit a fog bank, you, you need to slow down a bit. And you need to turn on some special lighting. <laughs> we could go all, the place, all over the place with that. But, but, you, but you need to slow down. You need to, you need to be able to see a little better. Take your time. But when you go through these kinds of things, that's what fear is. And when you, when you go through a fearful time in your life, fear says it's frightening and it's spooky. And it says, you, you know, that sickness you have, you're never going to get healed from it. You're going to die from that. Fear says, you know, you know your, uh, your finances, they're never going to get better. They're just going to get worse and worse and worse. Um, fear says, you know, your children, they're always going to, they're never going to get better. They're, they're no good. 
But you see, when, when, you, when you've experienced fog and you go through fog, you know that, listen, this is just going to last a little while. It's not going to be long. I'm going to be on the other side of this. This is either going to lift. And so what we've got to learn how to do is change channels. And when fear comes, we've got to say, listen, fog, you, listen, fear, you look spooky. You, you look frightening. You sound bad, but I know the truth. Because, see, I know that either you're going to lift or I'm going to get through you. And on the other side of you, the sun is still shining. And it's bright out there. And I'm going to have a great life. And I know there are some good things down below you. You are not it, fog. You are not it, fear. And when these things come on you, when these thoughts come on you, you know, they have this tendency to stir up your imagination. Bad. For, for, for example, maybe you start forgetting things. And it's things you shouldn't forget. It's things you should remember. But you forget things. And you say, oh, man, you know, Dad died of Alzheimer's and dementia. Oh, my gosh, you know, I bet that's what I got. I, I bet you... I bet you, you know, he died from that. I bet it's my turn. And, and you, you allow that imagination to start running in your mind. And you say, I got, I got, the, I got the beginning, beginning of Alzheimer's. And, and, so, and so you start seeing yourself forgetting who your children are. Forgetting where you live. You, you start seeing yourself, oh, one day I'm going to get lost. I don't even know where I am. I don't even know who I am. You know, one day they're going to they're gonna have to commit me to a nursing home. <laughs> And they're going to lock it so I can't get out. And if you keep letting that thing run in your head, you'll eventually see your own funeral. See, what fear does is create imaginations that are bad that take you places you don't want to go. So the Bible tells us how to handle this stuff. Let me read this to you. It's in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. It says, casting down imaginations. Listen, there are some imaginations that you just can't tolerate. There are some imaginations you've got to immediately cast down, bring down, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity. You've got to catch that thought, catch that imagination, bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. If it's not of God, you don't want it. Fear is not of God. You don't want it. And you've got to bring it down. You've got to cast it down. You've got to change channels. Listen, you are the owner. You not only own the television, you own the remote control. And it takes just as much energy to have it on the fear, horror channel as it does on the fate channel. And what you've got to do is change. If you're going to let your imagination run, then run it like with Moses. You know, Moses is 120 years old and he's still, his mind is sharp and he's still able, physically able to climb a mountain. His, the Bible says his eyes did not fail him. Listen, that's the channel I want to watch. You know, I want, I want to live 120 years. I want, I want to be physically strong. I want my mind, my eyes to still be, be good. Listen, run the, run the, run the scene in your life where you're victorious. Run the scene in your life where you're living your dreams and, and doing exactly what you want to do in life. Run, run, the, run the station on your, on your set. Run, run the station where your children are very successful and having great lives. Run the station where you're healed and you're full of energy and you can do anything you want to do anytime you want to do it. Run that station. Choose faith instead of fear. You have the remote control. Don't watch the fear channel. <laughs> and I want to say this. Listen, some of you could like right now, like tonight, go to a higher level of life than you've ever experienced before simply by disciplining your thought life. Simply by refusing to think negative thoughts. By simply disciplining your thought life, you can have more energy. You can have a better perspective of life. You can have joy. You can have energy in your, in your life. You can go to a place that you've never before experienced simply by controlling what you think. You heard about the woman who, uh, who was, it was in the summertime and it was hot and she went to get groceries. And so she goes in the grocery store and she gets her groceries and she comes out and she puts her groceries in the, in the back seat. And then she realizes that she's forgotten something. So she goes back in. And she gets groceries again. She gets what she has forgotten, and she comes back out, and she puts those in the back seat as well, and then she sits down and, under the steering wheel. 
And then she hears this noise, and she feels something hit her behind her head. And so she grabs back there, and she says, Oh, I've been shot, and my brains are coming out. And so she passes out. Well, a little while later, she wakes up, and, and, and she's, 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 she's motionless. She won't move. Well, this guy pulls in, and he sees her. And he says, she looks strange. So he goes on in, and then an hour later he comes out, and she's still sitting there, motionless, like this. So he calls the police, and he says, I don't know what's going on with her, but you better come and check her out, because something's, something's strange. So the police come and knock on the window. They said, ma'am, roll down your window. She says, I can't. I've been shot, and I'm holding my brains in. And so they jimmy the door, and they open up the back door, and they, and they get in, and they found out that a can of Pillsbury biscuits had exploded and hit her in the back of the head. And she's holding her brains in. Don't let your imagination run wild with you. Now listen, you're laughing. But some of you right now feel like you've been shot. And what God is trying to say to you today, it's just a sound. It's just dough. It's only fog. You're not losing your mind. The Lord is saying, choose faith instead of fear. The Lord is saying to you today, you get to choose. Don't be like Job and choose to be afraid and call that thing to you. Rather, be like those blind guys and chase Jesus down. And by your faith, get what you really need from life. The Lord is saying to you today, you be careful about your friends. Your friends are contagious. And if they're a faith friend, then they're going to help you. But if they're a fear friend, they're going to bring you down. And you're going to find things in your heart that don't need to be there. Guard your heart for everything about your life is coming from that. Don't let anything in there that you don't want to experience. Guard your heart, says the Lord. And, and remember, remember, you don't have a spirit of fear. That's not from God. What you have is power. You have the Holy Spirit in you. You have love. God loves you. You love God. People love you. And you've got a good mind. You've got the mind of Christ. Watch your imaginations. Don't let your imaginations go crazy with you. Change the channel. Guard your mind. Don't let your imaginations take you to places you don't want to go. Allow your imaginations to take you to a higher place in faith. And choose today to discipline your thought life. You're going to experience a great life, if you will. And you're going to be able to choose faith instead of fear. Let's pray. Father, thank you for today's lesson. Thank you, Lord, for all you do for us. Lord, we really do. Every single one of us has allowed fear to come over us, take us over. We knew better, but, Lord, it still happens. So your head's bowed and your eyes closed. Maybe, maybe that really relates to you. And just right now, you know, there's a thing in your life that's coming on you. There's a fear that's trying to control your thought life and your imaginations. And, and you're saying, man, I'm so tired of it. I really want God to help me through this. I think every single one of us has been to a place where we have experienced that. We've allowed fear to take us, control us, but no longer we say. So if that's you today and you relate to that, and maybe even right now it's, it's trying to do it to you, would you raise your hand right where you're sitting and let me? I see hands all over the place. Father, you, you see our hands. Lord, we don't want fear. We want faith. And, Lord, we're recognizing it right now that it's of the enemy. And, Lord, we refuse to bow to it. We choose faith instead of fear. Would you say that after me? I choose faith, not fear. Would you say that? I choose faith, not fear. Lord, we proclaim it to you right now. So Lord, remind us the very next time fear tries to come upon us. Remind us, Lord, that we get to change the channels, that we own the television and we also own the remote control. We're not going to let fear take us down. We're going to let faith take us up. Head still bowed and eyes still closed. You know you're not where you need to be with God. Your life is nothing but fear. And it's always going in the wrong direction. You see, without Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior, and maybe at one time he was, but you got away, or maybe he's never been. But without Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, things are going sour. They always go in a bad direction. But with faith, 
with Jesus in your life, you can chase him down. And he's going to bring to you your vision and your sight for your life. By your faith, you can have what you need as well. God hasn't given you a spirit of fear. God wants to give you power. God wants to give you love. God wants to give you a great mind. He wants to give you a life that you dream of. It's possible with Jesus Christ. So if that's you, and you know you're not where you need to be with God, would you right where you're sitting, just raise your hand, make eye contact with me, and let me pray for you right where you're sitting. Is that you? I see a hand right here. Any others? I see a hand over here, another one right over here.